Let's take a look at Saturday. There are three games on in the NBA. It's the only real streaming day of this week, so let's make sure we take full advantage of it. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I like girls who have had stilts surgically attached to their legs so they can try and get a contract in the NBA. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at LockedOnFantasyBasketball. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNBA. That is LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen, first watch. Every day, we are free. We are available on all platforms. If you listened to any of my shows last week, you would know that this one's only going out on YouTube at the moment. It'll get preloaded back onto audio later in the week. So if you are a first-time video banger, welcome. You can't really be a double banger for this show just yet, but just keep the the idea, the ethos, the vibes of being a double banger in play, but make sure you're hitting that thumbs up. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe. Uh, As here, uh, Here as well, over on YouTube, we are talking about Saturday. There are only the three games on. This is the key day, really, in terms of your guys that you can add who might be considered scrubs, most of them are, but you can actually use them on a day like this and just getting that little bit of extra boost into your week might be enough to put you over the edge, get you locked in to those fantasy playoff positions. Well, I guess that is the uh, I guess that is the aim, isn't it? To get in there. So um, let's just get straight into talking about the, the games. Yeah, let's just go straight into that. The first game up is your Orlando Magic. Uh-huh. And the Detroit Pistons, first game. What are we watching for? Well, actually, let's look at the schedule. The Magic are the only team with a Saturday-Sunday back-to-back. Now, Saturday, now, Sunday's got 11 games. Bit iffy on the streamer, but it's there. Uh, they've got three games the following week, the Magic. And then the Pistons play Saturday. Their week is done. And then they have four games the following week. In terms of injuries, Markel Fultz is out again. Um, I, I did expect, after he was ruled out on Thursday, I did expect that Fultz would be out on Saturday because it is a back-to-back. But obviously, he missed the game before the break with knee management. I think has he had like a uh, small procedure, PRP or something like that, and they used the break as extra extra recovery. I think that might be the case. I'm, make, I, I, I'm guessing, but the fact that you're out pre-break, post-break, with that eight days in the middle makes me think that they had a little bit of a procedure in there. I don't know what this means for him long-term. Oh, actually, I do know what it means for him in fantasy. Get that garbage out of here! But it doesn't mean that we're getting 28 minutes of Cole Anthony. It just means we're getting Mr. Black or we're getting Gary Harris and Jalen Suggs pumping up a little bit more of Anthony, but not enough to matter in most spots. Isaiah Stewart is out serving his um, second game of his pitifully weak suspension. And then we might have Quentin Grimes, maybe. Grimes is questionable. Um, after being out the last game and being out for a while with that knee problem. And that just leaves another person that Monty Williams can throw into the rotation. Williams is approaching the cap levels of lying. He, uh, he told us that he wasn't going to be throwing out any lineup combinations to see what works. He was trying to win. And then, of course, he played 11 guys in the first 13 minutes of the last game, played his best players the fewest minutes that he could, and cost the team the game very comfortably. And then when asked about it today, they said, like, Why, what happened? Why are you playing 11 guys? Well, actually, uh, I, I like to play a nine and a half man rotation. Monty, that's not a thing for a start. You can't have half a player. Not sure if you're aware how players and humans work, but you can't have half a player. But also, if you like to have a nine and a half man rotation, let's just say it's a 10 man rotation, right? Why don't you do it? Huh? Why don't you do it? Who's been running the rotations all season? Are you secretly trying to tell us that Troy Weaver is forcing you to play Marvin Bagley? Well, actually, that might be true. Is that why? You, is this a cry for help against the worst GM in the league? Is this you trying to dock Rivers yourself into saving face from being the worst coach in the NBA? I don't know. So if I can sit here and tell you that I don't know what the Pistons are going to do, that's because I don't. So I'm going to watch what Jaden Ivey does. Ivey has been good. He has some percentage issues for sure. I do think that he is a must-roster player, but there's wild stuff going on every game. 
in this team. It's just insane the stuff that happens. So we just roll with Ivy and we watch and see what goes on. For the Magic, it is about Suggs who copped a head injury last game. He's fine. But he is very much teetering on the droppable zone. With Fultz out, I probably give Suggs a little bit more um, credit, a little bit more of, of a longer time to reestablish, but just always seems to be something with him. In terms of stream guys, it is Cole Anthony that I look to, even though, again, I don't think he's pushing 30 minutes, but I'd prefer him over Mr. Black and over Gary Harris. And then there's Simone Fontecchio, who is not a must roster player at all. Like, he's not. He's an empty points player, who I think it'll get worse when Isaiah Stewart returns. Maybe, because, again, they don't know how to use Isaiah Stewart. But um, for streaming purposes, 28 minutes of Fontecchio, who could score 18 points, is definitely useful. That's really good on a day like this. That's the difference between a guy that we have to roster versus a guy that you use perfectly on a day like this with three games on, which is exactly the way I think we should be approaching Simone Fontecchio. Today's episode is brought to you by Stitch Fix. You know, that instant confidence boost that you get from an outfit that makes you look really good? Well, that's what you get with Stitch Fix. With Stitch Fix, you get a stylist who understands your style, your size, and your budget, and they do all the shopping for you. It is the easiest way to update your wardrobe this season. You can easily upgrade your wardrobe with a professional stylist that helps you find new, on-trend fashions that will work for you. You give them their size, your, your size, your style, your budget, Whatever it is that you want, you order the boxes when you want, how you want them. There's no subscription required. And in those boxes, they send five items back. They fit and they give you styling recommendations as well as outfit recommendations. The stylist always sends the just right pieces. The fit is on point. It's like they sort of know exactly what you want because they do, because you tell them, this is what my style is. And they work with that and give you stuff that, that makes sense for your style, for your body, for all of that sort of thing. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. That is stitchfix.com slash locked on. Stitchfix.com slash locked on. Okay, let's go on to the second game of the day. It is the Boston Celtics up against the New York Knickerbockers. For the Celtics, honestly, for fantasy, there's not a lot to look at. Like Drew Holiday, I'm just always going to be watching what's his usage look like. Do the defensive stats come back? Where's he shooting at? But like, we're just rostering these guys. Horford's the only one that's a question mark, or if they throw a random rest in, which they might at any point, but Holiday's the guy we look at. In terms of schedules, the Celtics and Knicks both play Saturday, no Sunday, obviously. None of these teams play Sunday apart from the Magic, but next week, the Celtics play three, and the Knicks play four. In terms of injuries, the Celtics at the moment are clean, and the Knicks have no Randall, no Ananobi, and no Mitch Robinson. For the Knicks, we want to watch Isaiah Hartenstein because he played 11 minutes last game. Now, he came out, I think it was today, and said that his minutes limit was like 21. So he was a bit annoyed that he played 11, which again, fair enough. Why are you only playing 11 so Jericho Sims can get out there? Do not drop Isaiah Hartenstein. Let's see what happens in this game. Let's see what his minutes look like. Um, Let's see how they continue to use him. But that is, it's frustrating to see those low minutes there. But we hope that that pushes back up. And I think it will. In terms of stream guys, it probably is Peyton Pritchard for Boston. But I don't put a huge amount of value on that. I don't think Tillman's the guy. Maybe it's Cornette. But for the Knicks, uh, it'll be Alec Burks. But also, if, if someone dropped someone like a Josh Hart, if someone decided they were going to drop Dante DiVincenzo, which honestly, someone did mention many people said, hey, do I just drop DiVincenzo? Like, no. What are you doing? No. If someone has dropped Boyan Bogdanovich, you can consider that. I don't think Bogdanovich is a long-term guy. Said this all the time, 23 minutes a night is not enough. But there are certain situations where you can drop someone like a Bogdanovich and it's the right move, but it also doesn't make it the wrong move to stream him back in on a day like this. That's the difference between a long-term decision versus a short-term streaming decision. So just have a look who's available. We know the Knicks are going to run a tight rotation. Interestingly, they gave more minutes to Juice McBride last game than Alec Burks. I still think that we're streaming in Burks over McBride, but that is something that just... Just worth paying that little bit of attention to, to see exactly what direction Thibodeau goes with those ones there. And then we go to the next game, which is the final game of the day. There's only three of them on. We are talking about the Brooklyn Nets and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, In terms of schedule, obviously they both play Saturday and then both teams, the Nets and the Wolves, play four games next week. And at the moment, there is only one bloke on the injury report and that is Jalen Clark. There might that who's out with the Achilles tear for the Wolves. Other stuff might pop up at some point. Cam Johnson might be probable with groin soreness or um, Anthony Edwards' knee might pop up as questionable or something like that. But at the moment, we don't have any lingering injuries for either of these teams. For the Nets, I want to see what is going on with Ben Simmons because Kevin Ollie's debut as a coach, honestly, dreadful. 
Like it was bad. It was actually disgustingly bad. And it's not about, well, he just came in and he needs to figure out the system. He's been there all year as an assistant coach. But to come in and lose to 30 points to the Raptors while playing Ben Simmons every single minute next to either Sharp or Claxton and also running him as an off-ball wing is actual insanity. What are you doing? Nothing in that makes any sense whatsoever. So what do they do with Simmons? Do they play him away from Claxton and Sharp? Is Ollie one of those coaches, and I fear this, is he in the Tom Thibodeau mold? We must have a tall man who stands under the rim at all moments. Is that how he views it? Because that's what he did. It was Sharp and Claxton, 48 minutes. I'm not saying that Sharp and Claxton aren't good because they're fine. They're pretty good. But is that what Ollie's idea is? So, yeah, we have to look this. If you want to drop Simmons, I don't think there's any, any problem with it whatsoever. We already knew there was a lot of issues with him staying healthy. Um, ramp up to minutes. Specific fits on teams is always going to be a problem. But this little wrinkle here of like Kevin Ollie not having any understanding of how to use him. And okay, that's fine. But if you don't know how to use him or you don't want to use him that way, don't play him. It's way worse to play Ben Simmons in a bad role than it is to not play him at all. It's way worse. So we'll find out. The Wolves, they're on a back-to-back. So we'll see what happens. In terms of streams, probably Lonnie Walker, but I would say that bench rotation was pretty rough. They took Jalen Wilson out of the rotation, which again, he'd been one of their best players. I don't think you need both Dennis Smith and Dennis Schroeder coming off the bench because honestly, Dennis Schroeder is bad. Lonnie Walker is a pretty good shooter, but like... It's just like a desperation heave for points. If someone's dropped Cam Johnson, you stream him in. If someone's dropped Dennis Schroeder, you stream him in. But at the moment, their roster percentages suggest they're available in most spots. Uh, Dayron Sharp might be streamable as well. But if they do lean into playing Simmons in a more optimal situation, then Sharp is going to miss out. So it's there's just so much uncertainty with this team. For the Wolves, Kyle Anderson or Nikhil Alexander-Walker probably step up to me. Just I would watch the Anthony Edwards one. Coming in off a of back-to-back, he's had that knee issue and hip issue all season. And if they decide to sit him against a team that is horrid, um, don't, be, don't be too surprised. Even Mike Conley, that might mean that Monte Morris moves in into a larger role or it means Nikhil Alexander-Walker or even Kyle Anderson gets somewhat of a boost in their overall value if that is indeed what happens, which, of course... We don't know at this point. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. eBay Motors has teamed up with me here at Locked On Fantasy Basketball to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. So when you're out there scouring the waiver wire, you can find the players that are guaranteed fit on your roster. Because honestly, as we know, that's what it's about. It's not about picking the best name or the highest scorer. It's how they fit onto a fantasy team. And in Utah, Keontae George is their starting point guard. And... He is going to get opportunities. He's going to get minutes. He's going to have shooting problems at times. But at the moment, they're actually okay. But they are going to lean into him. They're leaning into youth. They're starting Taylor Hendricks now as well. Keontae George just should not be left on the waiver wire. Yes, there might be issues, but who cares? You just need to have him on a roster, and then you figure that out as you go along. Is Keontae George a perfect fit? Well, I hope he would be. I hope you would be on your team. Make it make sense for your squad. And getting that player who is the perfect fit is a great way to push yourself towards a fantasy championship. And getting the perfect fit is the same as it is with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever it is that your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber and not cash. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to US customers. Eligible items only and exclusions apply. Okay, so let's look at the rest of this stuff here. The only team playing the Saturday-Sunday back-to-back is the Magic. The only team playing the Friday-Saturday back-to-back leading into Saturday's games is the Minnesota Timberwolves. So if we have a look at um, chunky stuff for Saturday through Wednesday, Saturday is a stream day, Monday is a stream day, Wednesday is a stream day. Pretty weird to see Monday and Wednesday being stream days, but that's what it is. I still think Kelly Linux got some real value. I know that the Raptors don't play again this week, but they play Monday, Wednesday. It wasn't great from a Linux last game. I'll probably only give him these next two games to see if he can push to 23 regularly, but he might. 
Uh, I've got Andy Nempard there. They play on Sunday, the Pacers, which is 11 games, borderline. But then they play Monday, Wednesday. He's got a pretty solid role at the moment. So we're all good with him as a, at least a stream guy. Fan of pants, Kevin Herter. Same schedule as the Pacers, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. So the two quality games there. He was solid enough last game. I do not trust Kevin Herter as a long-term ad, but at the moment, it's okay to stream him. Bruce Brown, same schedule as Olenek. Obviously, they play on the same team. His minutes are a little bit all over the place, Brownie. But if he plays 31, he smashes this. If he plays 25, he sort of hovers. And getting the two quality games pushes him over the edge. Jaden McDaniels has the Saturday, but then they play Tuesday and then Wednesday. So a little bit of a weird two quality game stretch here for McDaniels, who is not a must roster player. But getting the Saturday game in, getting the Wednesday game in is relatively interesting. And then I, it's always hard to put in anyone from the Memphis question marks because we just don't know who's going to be in, who's going to be out every game. It, it differs every time out. But I've got Jordan Goodwin here. Scotty Pippen, I know, is going to be out. Bain is going to be out. Smart is going to be out. I don't know what they're going to do with Gilead or Canard or Conchar or any of those guys or Jaron or anything. I would hope that Jordan Goodwin is still under contract with either a second 10-day or a full-time contract. And I would hope that they just try to see what he can do because he's better than Gilead. So we'll see what Good Goodwin could do. But that could blow up completely in our faces and give us absolutely nothing on the Monday, Wednesday. But I'm putting it there just as a name to pay some attention to. There's only one team that plays five games in eight nights starting on uh, Saturday, and that is the Moribund Brooklyn Nets. And then we go to the streams of the day. Your 10-team stream is Precious Achua, who just needs to be rostered. All the apology fetishists out there, man, are you going to apologize to Precious? No, I'm not. I still don't think he's very good, but he's obviously in a very good position, and that makes him a must roster player. The qu- the thing is going to be that if, when Randall and Ananobi come back, if Precious is still playing 30 minutes a night, then yeah, I will. I'll be like, cool. They obviously think way more of him. He has obviously improved in those scenarios, and I was wrong on that. But at the moment, he's just getting a ton of minutes because Randall, Ananobi, Robinson, and Hartenstein are injured, and he is producing solid enough counting stats. Still not sure how good he is as an actual player. But in terms of a stream guy, yeah, like he's available to be added in most 10-team leagues or a lot of 10-team leagues. And he should be on those rosters without any question. My thing is about it, whether it lasts long-term or not. Well, again, recently, he has been much, much better. Much improved player. Uh, no, no doubt about that whatsoever. 12-team, 14-team, and 16-team streams of the day, they all come from the Orlando Magic. Do I feel good about it? Not really. Cole Anthony's there as the 12-teamer. He can always just pop off for big scoring nights with some assists and steals. And with Markel Fultz out, maybe, but I don't feel super confident of high minutes. I've got Mo Wagner as the 14-team league guy. We've seen Goga Badadze being completely banished. We saw Mo Wagner go crazy last game. We see Wendell Carter's minutes stay down, so Mo is at least a high-level upside player. And for 16-teamers, I'm going to go with Gary Harris, who can get you two steals and two threes. And if you get 28 minutes as a starter, you're definitely viable as a 16-team streamer. For points leagues, Yahoo and ESPN, I am going to go with Simone Fontecchio, uh, looking at guys there who are at least 61% available. Let's look at the 10-team stream list. These are all 57 rostered and below. So it's a chewer. It's Jalen Suggs, the Wizard of Noz, Nas Reed, who has dropped down to this number, rightfully so. But that puts him back into your area to stream. He has no business being a must roster player, Nas Reed, on 10-team rosters, not at all. But absolutely is streamable in this scenario. You've got Al Horford there. Again, not a must roster player at all on 10-teamers. But we do stream him in in this scenario. You've got Jaden McDaniels there. And then I think Cole Anthony just sort of sneaks in the back door giggity to be the last guy on that list. Of course, any of those guys available in 12s become streamable in 12-team leagues also. Because the 12-team streamable list gets gets pretty rough pretty quickly. I've got Simone Fontecchio there. These are all 39% rostered and below. Fontecchio, Mo Wagner, Gary Harris, Kyle Anderson, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and Dayron Sharp, who might play 14 minutes. He might play zero. Kevin Ollie's approach did not work in game one. Will Kevin Ollie go back to that same approach? I don't know. I don't know. And that gives us a little bit of an indication of how Kevin Ollie coaches. We'll see what happens there. For deep league streams, I've got Lonnie Walker there. I've got Johnny Isaac. I reluctantly have Marcus Sasser because I don't know what Monty's going to do. I reckon about a week ago, he played 40 minutes of the game. And then he played 10 minutes behind and fewer minutes than Malachi Flynn last one. I don't know. Quentin Grimes, maybe if he's available, we consider that. Would he get the minutes over Ivan Fournier? I would hope so, but I also don't know. Dennis Smith Jr. And then there is the aforementioned diseased scrotum. Ivan Fournier as the last guy there on that deep league stream list. For points leagues, uh, these are all 50% rostered or below. Jalen Suggs, Simone Fontecchio, Kyle Anderson, Cole Anthony, 
Jaden McDaniels, and somehow Dayron Sharp projects well, and I don't feel any level of confidence in that whatsoever because of the aforementioned Kevin Ollie. It's Saturday with Kevin Ollie and Monty Williams both coaching. Oh, it is going to be an absolute delight for nonsense coaching with Pistons Connections. That brings us to the end of this show, really short daily look-ahead show because there was nothing else to talk about. There was only those three games on. So don't... Oh, yeah, by the way, other news. Alexei Pokashevsky got waived. He obviously was well out of the Thunder plans. I'm not sure that he's got another role in the NBA coming up anytime soon. And even though I was relatively high on him in what I thought was a weak draft class, um, I was even I was way too high on him there. I thought it was worth taking a flyer on him a little bit earlier than what he was picked, but it was wrong. And he has been bad most of the time. His shot is just not improved at all. He's done. Fuck, cool. Fine. See you later. He's out of here. And I don't think you need to worry about that for fantasy at all. But what you do need to worry about is double banging. Well, you can only single bang, but at least thumb it up, at least subscribe, leave your comments down below. And I welcome all of the audio only people who have found this show because this show is not available on audio. Guys, thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.